Back in 2018, I reviewed the revamped MacBook Air, and I liked it, although I didn't like its butterfly keyboard. I thought it was too shallow, I didn't like the tactile feedback, it was just pretty much awful. So fast forward to 2020, Apple announces a new MacBook Air, and one of the key improvements, of course, is the inclusion of the Magic Keyboard, a much better keyboard than its predecessor. And this past Monday, I got it into the studio to put it through its paces. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and review of the Apple MacBook Air, all new for 2020. Coming up. Now, before we begin, I want to give a big thank you to everyone as the channel just surpassed 15 million views and 80,000 subscribers. In fact, we hit that 80,000 subscriber mark during Friday night's live stream. You don't want to miss it every Friday night, 7 p.m. Pacific time. Today's video is brought to you by U2Key.com. Find out later in this video how you can save 15% off Microsoft Office and Windows 10 professional OEM keys. Want to see more videos like this? Why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell? This way you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. Make sure you follow me on social media, especially Twitter and Instagram, because that's where I post all the latest updates. And in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Apple, I'm not being sponsored by Apple, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own and no one is seeing this video before it's released. This unit was purchased with my own money, I did not receive a review unit from Apple. The MacBook Air has a starting price of $9.99 and with a student discount it goes down even more. But at closer look, that starting price is not as great as it seems and that's because you only get a dual core, Core i3. For $100 more you can step up to the quad core, Core i5, which will give you much better performance. And of course, you're probably asking yourself, well, wait a minute, if I'm already spending that much, spend a little bit more and I can get a MacBook Pro 13 inch. Well, there are a couple of problems with that. The MacBook Pro 13 inch is still running the 8th generation quad core processor, but again, it's not a 10th generation ice lake that you'd find in the new MacBook Air. It also is using that awful butterfly keyboard that has a lot of problems. Uh, you won't get that new magic keyboard that you get on the MacBook Air. But then again, we are expecting a refreshed 14 inch MacBook Pro, which should be coming very soon. So if I were in the market right now, I probably would wait for that. Now with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now inside the box, of course, is your MacBook Air. Once again, excellent packaging, premium style from Apple. This is no exception. And you're lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself and holding the MacBook Air. It feels like any other MacBook, very high end, very premium, all good for $9.99. You get your USB-C cable and you also get a 30 watt USB-C power adapter with a USB plug prong in it. You don't get that extension cord anymore. You get some documentation, you get some space gray stickers and of course you get the unit itself. Now the unit itself feels really good, very premium, very high end as I mentioned with that space gray color. You could also get it in gold and you could also get it in silver. It's all metal unibody design, it's thin, light and easy to carry around. Now it doesn't have a lot of ports, in fact it only has two Thunderbolt 3 ports and they're both located on the left side. I wish they were opposite sides of each other and you get a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and that's it, no other ports. So you will be living the dongle life. And for those wondering, yes you can open it with one finger. Now thankfully, gone is the butterfly keyboard which had awful key travel and had a lot of mechanical issues. It would break down on people and I'm glad they went away from that and went with the new Magic Keyboard. And I can tell you with those scissor style keys, this is a much better experience, better key travel, better tactile feedback. They did a much better job. And it has a multi-level backlit keyboard which allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. Works really great. Now it also has the Touch ID, which I love for logging in. It works really great. It's almost instantaneous. And that's thanks to the fact that it's using that T2 chip that this has. Now Apple makes the best touchpads in my opinion. This is a nicely sized touchpad, super responsive, great for two finger scrolling, which is buttery smooth. All gestures work well. This is an excellent implementation. This is no exception. Now before we get to the display, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. 
Today's video is brought to you by U2Key.com. Your one-stop shop for Windows 10 professional OEM keys, Microsoft Office keys, Steam CD keys, mini games, and so much more. And right now you can save 15% off if you use the discount code AUK15. That's a pretty good deal. So head on over to U2Key.com to get those special savings. And I want to thank U2Key for sponsoring today's video. The Apple MacBook Air 2020 has a 13.3 inch IPS True Tone display. Resolution is 2560 by 1600. That's a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. You're also looking at some really deep black, some very vibrant colors, good white points, and it also has good contrast. And it also gets pretty bright. Now we're talking 325 nits, which is good for indoors, but outdoors it's okay, although it is a glossy display and you will notice the reflections. And it's definitely brighter than the 2018 MacBook Air, but it wasn't quite as bright as the Apple MacBook Pro 13 inch from 2019 or the recently released Dell XPS 13. Now it doesn't have the slimmest of bezels, especially when you compare it to some of the more modern Windows laptops. Take a look at this next to the new Dell XPS 13 2020 and you'll know exactly what I mean. And for those wondering, yes, I am doing a head-to-head -head between the new Dell XPS 13 and this 2020 Apple MacBook Air, so stay tuned for that. And I think it's time Apple starts to put touch displays in their MacBook line. I understand their reluctance. They don't want to cannibalize their iPad sales. But having said that, having used touch displays on things like the new Dell XPS 13, it really makes a big difference. I'm a big proponent of touch displays, and I think it's high time that Apple follows suit. So this is the front-facing camera on the Apple MacBook Air 2020 FaceTime camera. Now, let's be honest, this FaceTime camera is pretty lame, and considering people are going to be working from home, this is a pretty important feature of a laptop. As bad as it is, it's still better than last year's model. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And in typical Apple fashion, nothing is upgradable on this laptop. The RAM, the storage, it's all soldered into the motherboard. But as far as repairability is concerned, we have a much better situation this year than it was last year. Check out iFixit's coverage of repairability of the MacBook Air. They do a really good job. And speaking of the SSD they do give you, it gives you some pretty good reads and writes, as you can see from these results. And while we're inside, let's take a look at what's changed since last year. As you can see on the left, the 2018 MacBook Air had a smaller heat sink pipe. They actually made a larger one in this year's model. Hopefully that'll help with the cooling. Unfortunately, uh, spoiler alert, it didn't really help too much. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And it still has a 49.9 watt hour battery. Why they didn't go with an even 50, who knows? And speaking of battery life, it did 9 hours and 32 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. However, it was outpaced by the new Dell XPS 13 9300, the HP Spectre X360, and even the Lenovo C940 all got better battery life, although 9.5 hours is pretty good. Now, if you do need to plug in, they do supply you with a 30-watt power adapter, and it took a little bit more than 2 hours to give you a full charge. That's not too bad. Now another miss is the fact that they're using Wi-Fi 5 as opposed to the more modern Wi-Fi 6, so it won't be quite as future-proof in this laptop. But having said that, range was good, uploads and downloads were pretty good as well. Now I have both the Core i3 and the Core i5 variants. I wanted to see what the difference between that entry-level 999 model would be and the Core i5, which is the one I think everybody should get. Now the Core i3 didn't do quite as well in the benchmarks, which is kind of expected, of course, since it is only a dual-core processor, as opposed to the quad-core CPU you find in the Core i5. Now these are both 10th generation Intel Ice Lake processors, but one thing about that Core i5 you want to know is that it's the 10-watt variant. Not quite quite as good as the 15 watt variants we've seen in other Windows laptops. Now all models of the Apple MacBook Air 2020 come with Intel Iris Plus graphics. Well that might seem good on paper, the better Iris Plus graphics, the faster Iris Plus graphics will be found on the Core i5 and of course on the Core i7. So if you want to play games such as Fortnite, well, you better get the Core i5 or the Core i7 because it would barely run on a Core i3. Now, of course, the Core i3 will be perfectly fine for basic tasks such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, consuming media. It will be perfectly fine. But if you want to do more graphics intensive tasks such as gaming, video editing, I would forget about that Core i3 and concentrate on the Core i5 or even the Core i7. 
Now, when it comes to thermals, when I streamed a 15 minute HD video full screen, it was actually pretty good, never getting overly hot, never getting above 33.3 degrees Celsius. But things changed really radically when I started playing games, when I started really pushing it with video editing, it started to thermal throttle, started to get really hot. And that's where I think Apple missed the boat. Having only one fan and an insufficient heat pipe really makes this thing get very hot and ultimately thermal throttle. Now, Apple claims you'll get 25% more volume, you get twice as much bass, and they're not lying. This is actually really good speakers on the new MacBook Air for 2020. It gets loud, it fills up the room rather nicely, the sound is very rich, full, and I gotta say, they did a great job. So to wrap it all up, can I recommend the all-new Apple MacBook Air for 2020? And the answer is yes, although I have some reservations. Let's talk about what I like first, and then we'll talk about what I'm not crazy about. I like its very good 13.3-inch True Tone display, very good battery life, improved keyboard, 16 to 10 aspect ratio, its sleek design, excellent speakers, and excellent touchpad. Now, the things I'm not crazy about, of course, are the fact that it only has two Type-C ports, and they're located on the same side of the device. That's not good. I'm also not crazy about its performance, especially with the Core i3. It also runs rather hot when it's under heavy load, and those display bezels are looking a bit dated. But there's a lot to like about this new MacBook Air, especially its improved keyboard. I'm going to give it a score of 86%, making the Apple MacBook Air 2020 worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy, the all-new MacBook Air? New for 2020, and I gotta say, a lot of improvements and a couple of things I'm not crazy about, as I mentioned. The good stuff, of course, is it's got a new keyboard. It's the Magic Keyboard. They did away with that butterfly keyboard, which was problematic. It was breaking down on people. It was pretty shallow in terms of key travel and just overall pretty lousy. Now, as far as the display, we're looking at a 13.3 inch True Tone display. And I'm not the biggest fan of True Tone, to be honest. When I'm editing videos, I want it to be the most color accurate. And with True Tone on, that's not the case. So when you turn it off, I think it's actually pretty good. Uh, brightness is okay. I got only 325 nits. I kind of wish it was a little bit brighter. But outdoors, you might have some issues because it is a reflective display. So you will notice the glare and you will notice the reflection. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but I like it. Now, I'm not crazy about its bezels, and especially coming from the Dell XPS 13 that I recently reviewed, these actually look rather dated. Now, as far as the battery life, you're looking at nine and a half hours, which is very good, although not quite as good as the XPS 13, but nine and a half hours is good enough for all day battery life. Now, I would stay away from the Core i3 model. It's a dual core model, and as I pointed out, the numbers are not gonna be as good. Performance will definitely not be as good as the Core i5. And the Core i5, of course, has the Intel Iris Plus graphics that are even better than the one on the Core i3. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, of course, thermals are gonna be an issue on this, as I showed in this video. Uh, doing normal tasks, everyday tasks, of course, web browsing, email, Microsoft Office, You'll notice the fan will kick in every now and then, but nothing too bad. Now, when you start to push it, of course, with video editing or gaming or any kind of processor intensive tasks, it will start to thermal throttle. It will start to get hot. So the thermals are not great on this. That's because it only has one single fan in this and the heat pipe is not the best in this. So again, I'm not going to bash them too hard on it because most people are not going to be doing these kind of tasks on this, but that's something you need to be aware of. I think it's a good deal at $9.99. Again, I would spend that extra hundred dollars to go to the core i5 but if you absolutely cannot spend more than one thousand dollars it's a pretty good deal especially if you're a student you'll get even more of a discount again i want to know what you think let me know in the comment section below so please hit the like button please subscribe please share this video don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below let me know how i'm doing let me know if there's a device or something out there you think i should review I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.